Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good to see you. Merlin, Aniva, Veralise, Chancy, Jonathan, and Teresa. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, and welcome back. Okay. Welcome back. Okay, Jansi, thank you. Uh, let us wait a little bit because I have seven people, seven participants, and you know, you are like 19, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, Daniel got into the group. I can Hello. see Jose Daniel is. Hello, Daniel. You can see Jose Daniel will be as a listener tonight. I can see Aníbal there. Hello, Aníbal. Gladys is just getting into the class. Okay, it's getting better. I have nine people. Well, I will start. And I will check the list attendance with the, with the people that I have just now. Remember to say your name, okay? To say hello, to say um, person, that would be all right. Aidan? Belen? Daniel? Present. Good. Edgar Edilson? Gladys? Present teacher. Okay, very good. Jonathan Jose. Present teacher. Good. Jose Daniel. I know Jose Daniel is there in. Present teacher. All right. Jose Daniel. Juan Fernando. Maria Elba. Mario Cristobal. Verenice. Merlin. Michael. Present teacher. Okay, excellent, Merlin. Noah, that's Aníbal, right? Eh, Xiomara, Ronan, Teresa, Vera Liz, present teacher, and Chancey. I said Chancey here. Let me see. Yeah, I know you are here. Okay, 11 people. Okay, hope everybody can get into this session. Okay, because tonight there is a topic that's um, very interesting. We have a topic that will be very interesting, right? And it's going to be time. Okay, Edgar said, okay, I got it, Edgar. Uh, I can see that you are over here. And you know, I can see that Anissa got into the class tonight. Also, as always, Edgar got into the class, you know. Well, I was just telling you, yeah, I can I I I I saw the message, Daniel, don't worry. Okay, don't worry. I was just telling you about the topic that we are starting tonight, and it is very interesting. <laughs> it will be very interesting because, you know, we're going to start a topic in which you need to, <clears throat> to uh, how can I say this? You, you, you need to, well, yesterday, you know, uh, 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 a list of verbs were was um shared, right? So that means that we have a lot of work to do. Okay, Daniel, I got it. So, but uh, we're going to start by having our review about yesterday's stuff. I know, but listen. Uh, I told you right that the one of the of the humble assignments that you are in church of um working 
every single day is about learning a new expression, right? So I, I need some people to share what you what you've learned lately. Okay. What have you learned lately? What is the expression, new expression you got? Okay, let's let's go over it quickly. New expression, new vocabulary. Anybody in the group, please. New word, new vocabulary, uh, sibling. Siblings. Siblings. Marca okay. el hermanos y hermanas. Yeah. Por ejemplo, how many siblings do you have? Ah, okay. por separado, how many sisters do you have? So many brothers do you have? Desde un solo, how many siblings do you have? Okay. Excellent, Daniel. Siblings is a new word that you will never forget. Okay. Like uh, time after time. <laughs> if I remember your expressions, that means that you, that you remember them more than myself. Okay, Jonathan, let us know about the new expression you got today or during the week. Um, expression, um, um, <clears throat> no, I have an idea. Um, 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 just mentioned time after time, but, um, Podría decir, bueno, no sé si cuando uno pide entrar nuevamente, podría decir, may I coming o algo así. Ok, very good. So, for uh, asking for permission, right? May I come in? Yeah. Ok. Ok, thank you, Jonathan. Michael? Ok. Hi, good evening. Hello, hello. Hello, Fernando. Yes, coach. Uh, Michael, did you learn something new that you want to mm. share with everybody here? Yeah, I have two words, uh, newsletter and apologies. Okay, very good. Apologize in newsletter. Uh, apologize. Okay, apologize. Very good. Uh, what's the meaning of those words, Michael? Newsletter is como boletín informativo, alguna... Una All right. And to apologize. apologize. Yes, como disculparse. Yeah, okay. I ah. apologize. Thanks. Very good. Uh, okay. Thank you, Michael. Quite good. Okay. So, new two new words that you will never forget. I like that. Uh, Juan Fernando, I, I noticed you wanted to say something, right? Sorry, sorry. Yes, teacher. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you have just learned a couple of expressions recently. I mean, in English recently. Yes. Yeah, which ones? And the uh, hunger or the bear? Uh, I mean, it's up to you. Okay. One, one minute. It's a complete presentation. Okay, okay, remember, we are just uh, trying to remember about the expression we have learned recently, right? Okay, so I don't know if there is anybody else who wants to share ex new expressions, new vocabulary you have uh, uh, acquired lately. No, no, it's, um, it's never too late to try something new. Very good, Veronica. Okay, I don't know, uh, Veronica, do you have any problem with microphone or with, with uh, camera? Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, Juan. Okay, Juan. I don't know if you want to include something else. 
Yes, and presentation with uh, values. Okay. I prefer... Yes. Okay. 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 That, that homework is prepare a two minutes presentation about impact of the cover the cover values of the company on the first time. Ah, okay. So you're just getting into the homework, and yes. that's quite good. Okay, so go ahead, uh, Fernando. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my company is a GCG group. At GCG group, our, our values are based on uh, teamwork and excellent. What are they? Number one, uh, dedication. I am dedication and coming to our company, our community, our employees, and the custom we serve. Um, service, excellent. Number two, always um, the like custom drown in promise progress, service and quality. Number three, integrity. I act with honest and integrity with compromise, the truth. And number four, uh, inspirational leadership. I have the conquer to take command and the shape the future. Number five, continuous in progress. Okay, sorry, continuous in progress. And constantly see to improve myself and the does a ground the challenge that statute cool to the late customer the ground improves progress service safely and quality provide responsibility I take responsibility for my action as the as they influence and the life and the live, sorry, of our client and co work. Number seven, innovation. A development new career idea that have the post the, the potential to share, to change the world. Is a slogan for a company. The way you think about a person is because of their good values. That's all. Wow. Great job, Fernando. Great job. I clapped your effort and I clapped your performance. Okay. Well, we are going to get a, that, that's, that's a really nice example for the rest of the participants, right? We're going to get there in a couple of minutes. Okay. When I tell you, well, I, actually, Fernando was like, hey, I, I want to share what I have been studying. Okay. And congratulations for doing so, Fernando. Okay. But uh, when I tell you to go and tell me about what, what you, what, about the two minute speech that you, speech that you have prepared. So do me the favor to do it like, like, like the way Fernando did it, right? Like, really, hey, I, I want a teacher, I want to participate and say what I have gotten, okay? So, but before going to that part of the class, well, I already checked the list of things. We're gonna practice a little bit in the platform so, uh, so that I can, uh, we can be sure everybody has finished the activity in a platform. Uh, yesterday, well, the, the day before yesterday, what what was it, the, the topic we studied the day, the day before yesterday? How to use infinitives, okay? So we went over the topic, okay? Almost in detail, right? We saw some exercises. We tried to put uh, the information into practice. And I think, well, we, we did a great job. 
then we you saw this exercise and yesterday we uh, studied about the way of using ing forms after prepositions okay that was the topic we started or we started yesterday and this is the second task right and today wow well, what a topic what a topic the one that we have tonight so it's quite important let me see how many participants do i have 18. okay ronan don't worry okay but I hope you can pay special attention, especially when we get into the part that's related to passive voice. Okay, so, but yesterday we were talking about ING form after prepositions, right? So, and the, the exercise in the platform was not that difficult. And we have, for example, a question right here. It says, answer the following questions. That is not that complicated, right? But look at the question. A, who is responsible for? For survive? The staff? Or what? Uh, okay, super, supervise. Supervising or to supervise? What's the best supervising. option? Supervising. Supervising. Okay, so can you read the whole question, please? Can Who somebody... is responsible for supervising the staff? And who's responsible for supervising the staff? Good. Supervising. Now, second question. Who is in charge of check? the quality and quantity of the t-shirts. What's the best option? Infinitive, the person singular, or person participle? Infinitive, the person singular of a verb, or person participle? Person participle. Person participle, I in the form, right? Who is in charge of checking the quality and the quantity of the t-shirts? Number three, who is in charge of repaired problem of uh, the shipping containers? And then we have, who is in charge of for repair, repairing, or to repairs? First, second, or the third one? Second, repairing. Second, repairing, repairing, right? Because we have, what is this? Preposition of. Uh, it's a preposition of, good. And yesterday we, start, we started that after a preposition, we need an ing form of a verb. Okay, and then we have, who is accountable for the products at the warehouse? Sales, selling, for to sell. Table for sales. Sales. Huh? Sales. Selling for an ng4. With ng4, selling. Who is accountable for selling the products at the warehouse? And number five, who is in charge of the customers? And we have assist. And we have assisting. And we have the infinity to assist. And then we have assisting to best option. Best option. What is the best option? First. Assisting. Assisting. Okay. Very good. Now let's see. We're gonna check it. We're going to see the answers. Quite good. Who's responsible for supervising the staff? Who is in charge of checking the quality and quantity of the t-shirts? 
Who is in charge of repairing the problem of the shipping containers? Who is accountable for selling the products at the warehouse? Who is in charge of assisting the customers? Good. So you got a 10. Quite good. Okay, so that was the topic we started yesterday. Besides that, okay, besides that, I we were we were discussing also about core values, right? Core values such as uh huh, such as uh huh, such as which ones? Such as Fernando mentioned some of them in his presentation, right? Okay, so how do you pronounce the values over here? In the no, I mean, oh, it's it was my fault it's because I'm, I don't know. Give me a second. Now, do you see people the info in the PDF uh, guide? Yes or no? Do you see do you see the info? Well, I will stop sharing but because I can see that maybe you are not able to see the information I'm sharing now. Or I'm trying to share now. Can you see the info now, people? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. Quite good. Now uh, I was just telling you about the about uh yesterday's class. And uh, we were discussing about certain values that are quite important in the company we work with. And we started about this one. How do you pronounce this value? Uh -huh. Efficiency. Efficiency. What about this one? Integrity. Integrity. What about this one? Innovation. 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 This one? Loyalty. Loyalty. This one? Respect. Respect. This one? Responsibility. Responsibility. This one? This one? Quality. Punctuality. Punctuality. And the last one. Service to service others. Service to others, right? So, and I told you also to, well, Fernando already finished, right? He was the first. And, well, before going to your presentation, antes de irnos a su presentación, vamos a hacer dos cosas. Vamos a resolver este ejercicio y también le voy a compartir un video de ocho minutos para que ustedes vean un poquito más de vocabulario que a lo mejor les puede ayudar en su presentación, ¿ok? So, give me a second. Then, you complete this part, right? It says, complete the sentences below with one of the, of the values from the box. Compare your answers with your partner. And we have an example. For example, I apply punctually when I get to my job on time. When I welcome customers to store, I show, I show what? We show when I, huh? respect. respect. Okay, you show respect. You show respect. I don't like red. I will switch it into another color. I show respect. Good. Hey, the next one is to accept your mistakes and their consequences. Consequences, sorry. Number three, what is that? Responsibility. 
responsibility. Okay, responsibility. Or mistake is in the consequence. Responsibility. Is to accept your mistakes and their consequences, right? Show. You heard that here, right? Responsibility. After that, you have I show when I finish my duties on time. Punctuality. Is that right? Hmm. Yes, punctuality. Yeah, punctuality. Because it says on time, right? I show punctuality when I finish my duties on time. Number four, if I suggest a creative solution to my team, I apply innovation. Innovation, right? Double in. Is that right? Innovation. I'm sorry. Innovation. Oops. And the last one. No, yeah, this is the last one, right? When I offer help to a customer, I demonstrate service to others. Service to others. Service to others, okay? Now, our job is already done in this part, okay? So we're already finished with it. We uh, had some review about values, okay? Now, you know, this is the homework, right? The two-minute presentation. And I told you, right, it all depends on you. If you want to spend two minutes, it will be all right. If you want to spend more than two minutes, it will be all right. It's up to you. Okay, now we stop uh, sharing this, and I will share the link that I told you, right? There's a link. I was just seeing the information, and uh, the link is in the book. Uh, but I will share it over here, and I will share it in the in the WhatsApp group. Now, remember that you are in charge of talking about your company, right? So that's why I decided to share the, the video that the PDF uh, presents or the link that the PDF presents. Well, I will share it first in the, in the chat over here. The videos is like eight minutes and a couple of seconds more. So I will give you exactly eight minutes. El video tarda ocho minutos, entonces vamos a invertir otros ocho minutos. ¿Qué va a pasar después de que pasen esos ocho minutos? Entonces, sí, lo que hizo Fernando eh, al inicio, yo lo voy a solicitar con cada uno de ustedes. Así que espero que estén listos. Ok, there you are in the chat. Let me see how long is the video. As far as I remember, it's eight minutes. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's almost nine minutes. Okay, so you will have nine minutes from now on. Tienen nueve minutos. Okay, léanlo. Um, y ya luego a lo mejor eso les permite incluir algo más en sus dos minutos de presentación.
home industry. We're an OEM manufacturer. Okay, three minutes more, and then remember, time to participate.
minutes. All right, I think you already is uh you already saw the video, right? <clears throat> okay. I think you're more than ready to participate in providing information. Okay, I will ask only once, right? So remember you need to be ready to participate. Aiden. Hello, Aiden. You have the opportunity. Yeah. Okay, now I think it, it would be better. It would be better if if you raise your hand, right? So that that would that would help me. More. Eso me ayuda más, que levanten su manita y me indiquen que ya están listos, ¿ok? Y quieren participar. That's the homework, people, the two-minute speech. I need to see your hands there, indicating me that you are more than ready. Ajá, uh -huh. ok, thank you, Berenice. Yeah, well, um, my company that is dedicated to sale of cable television outside of the country, uh, for which physical contact does not rule out the experience that we can offer the client in a call. As well, for what environment within the site important values are equipped to offer the personal goals, call it CPAW. Uh, the most important areas, curiosity, power, adventure, and winners. It's the motto of the agent we least used to think that fulfill an individual mission and ambition. Uh, the value of the company are inward and honestly, commitment, permanent innovation, respect, responsibility, leadership, and self-improvement. In this company, as we say, we are proud for your work team because again, their equality is where give us stability. And uh, we are equal on the side. And in fact, and the helping society, CNX has a different added programs, visit to shelters, dot homes, and each agent is a gift to a tree plant and make a new green area. Uh, we have assistant is provide to realize turtles, beach cleanups, and different campaigns and variety of activities. Because the values are is the basis for your company, and it is the ways we help and impact offside of your spots. I'm finished. Fantastic. Uh, now, Berenice, how was your experience? Because you took like like more than two minutes, of course. How was your experience? Did you did you learn a lot of vocabulary? Well, and I express it that. And you also everything. Uh huh. Yeah, everything is something to do and. Each agent in the in the site is just a, 
es lo que hacemos nosotros pues cada semana, entonces para mí es no sé, un nuevo vocabulario solamente quizás el el ir ordenando lo, las ideas Okay, that that's another purpose, right? It's just for you to to order the ideas, right? And yeah. when you have a two minute speech, it's because you need to you need to speak something, uh, but uh, being clear about what you are saying, right? It's not only like I will memorize this and that's it. No, it is better when you know it perfectly what you are saying. All right. A any thank you, Veronica. You're very kind. Okay, is there any other person? Raise your hand. If you want to participate. But well, I had two participants tonight, Berenice and Fernando. What about the rest? This kind of act or this type of activities is for everybody to participate. Yes, teacher. Ah, okay, Michael, you have your opportunity. I I don't miss and complete my task, but I, I can say, I can share a, a little. It's the question say, okay, okay. The integrity by my my companies is business integrity in the sum of goal practice tool process and internal structure that's from a common framework uh, loyally what is a business loyally attitude of deep commitment of the collaborators to work their place or work. It is manifested in the unconditional commitment. They show the way they ensure their role and the things they are willing to do the goal of the organization. Even if if it not an obligation. And why is it important to encourage employees, loyalists, time, how a change in it is not longer common from employees to pain the decay the decade to the same company. The new generation are more versatile and are in constant search of a few experience that enrich them more a sensitive e issue when choosing and hearing stuff. Uh, that's why loyal employees who feel a special connecting and to identify with your company are the heads of successful companies. The presence of this type of collabor collaborators is evident. They are the ones who constant propose improvement, resolve conflict, help their college and save resource. Among other things, they make it possible to a large extent for a company to be more in effective and achieve the objectives in the expect time. Uh, the action does com companies can do reduce the environment impact. If you use, use energy efficiency, carry out energy out of your process and facilities, 
it will help you to know if you are using the best available technique periodically check your consumption and thermal installation it's hot and cold in equipment Cons consume weather responsibility it is important to carry out a periodic control of your consumption and apply the best available technique uh, think about how you can reduce conception or reduce some of the facilities, weather streams. That's all, teacher. Okay, Daniel, thank you very much. Now remember that there is a there is a a challenge, right? Remember, there's a challenge. Okay, there there should be a time or there. We we can like have the opportunity to present the information with the with the necessity or without having the necessity of reading, okay? But that was quite good because I could notice that you you could practice pronunciation, Michael. Okay. Okay, teacher. Okay, very good. Now listen, we're going to go over the topic we I have prepared for you tonight. Actually, let me see. Uh, teacher, yo quiero, uh, yo quiero participar. E excellent, pretty good. Who who wants to participate? Merlin. Sí. Okay, Merlin, go ahead. Mm. I work at an university. Uh, this is now for for being for being the only public university in the country that provides a free education. And for his social projection work, um, some some core value are autonomy, responsibility, teamwork. Um, about autonomy, it is about the free teaching which is necessary in the formation and transmissions of knowledge. Uh, how does it impact the staff? Uh, encourage critical thinking? Um, how does the staff apply it? Uh, teacher, have freedom of teaching. Uh, the staff elect the staff elect their authorities without a state intervention. About responsibility. Um, impersonal responsibility causes a better organization climate because they meet the results um, for stop to take change of their actions university university legislation applies about uh, core value team work um, can have a positive or negative impact 
because the war must be coordinated between several people. It is positive. There is great unity. Unity. There is great greater unity. If not, they are conflicts. Um, every day while performing work and uh, fulfill the eagerly commitment. Um, only that teacher. Thank you, Merlin. Great. Okay, now, yes, we're going to try to start with our new topic. And I want you to pay, uh, well, we don't know finish with this, just to, to have some review about yesterday. Because you know what? Tomorrow, we're going to have um, a practice. Okay, and just for you to know about it. Take a look at the topic for tomorrow. Okay, so right now we are discussing about ING4, the preposition, and this is the topic, the passive voice. But you know what? After having the passive voice, we have a vocabulary practice. What are you gonna do with it? Well, you are going to tell us the way or the activities that um, people perform at your company by using infinitives, by using ing forms, okay? Van a preparar, okay, una, una presentación, en, okay, esto es para el día de mañana, práctica de vocabulario. Van a preparar una pequeña presentación, si quieren le incluyen imágenes, okay? O lo escriben o hacen una PowerPoint, como ustedes prefieran. De las actividades que ustedes hacen en sus lugares de trabajo. Ustedes y sus compañeros de trabajo. Y en, esa, en ese ejercicio, por supuesto, van a investigar vocabulario. Además de eso, van a ocupar infinitivos y van a ocupar ING después de los de las preposiciones, o sea, esas, esa, eso debe de aparecer en la presentación sí o sí, ¿ok? ING form, infinitives, en vocabulario nuevo, new vocabulary, right? Vocabulario que no hemos estudiado en clase y que por supuesto es, es relacionado al trabajo que ustedes desarrollan. Esto es para mañana. Ahora, fíjense bien qué es lo que se viene para el día viernes, que es el review and practice. Review and practice. Yo, personalmente, he pensado en estas dos horas trabajar en passive voice. ¿Ok? En passive voice. Ahora vamos con passive voice. ¿Ok? Y passive voice no, van a, no vayan a pensar que Vamos a invertir una hora completita en ello y ya se acabó. No, yo les he dicho siempre, apenas estamos iniciando un tema. Ok, entonces yo quisiera que el día viernes, pues incluyamos las tres cosas, si es posible. Infinitivos, ING forms después de preposiciones y lo que vamos a estudiar ahora que es voz pasiva. Ok, ustedes buscan su, una actividad, un cuento, una historia lo que ustedes prefieran y nos muestran cómo han aplicado los temas que hemos estado estudiando, ¿ok? Empezando del día de mañana. El día de mañana lo que yo solicito es que nos eh, describan las actividades que hacen en sus lugares de trabajo, utilizando infinitivos, utilizando ING después de las preposiciones. Ojo, no van a incluir voz pasiva, todavía no. Eso lo vamos a incluir al día viernes. Ok, dicho esto, sí, vamos a empezar con passive voice. Passive voice, ok, people. That is our 
topic for tonight, okay? Okay, uh, but yesterday, yesterday we were like working about having uh no 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 this is a this is a this is no this is passive voice no yes well i hope you work in this right we we have been working a lot of, uh, about ig4 who is responsible for you said it supervising who is in charge of checking checking who is responsible for repairing good repairing. who is accountable for Selling. Selling. Who is in charge of? Assisting. And who is accountable for? Managing, right? Managing. Okay, so this, actually, we are done with it, right? So, you know, tomorrow we're going to put them into practice only. But over here, there is a, there is a, well, there are like two questions. Yes, there is a topic. We're going to, we're not going to go over them like we did um, in the previous classes because, well, I will ask you to answer these questions tomorrow. What is reputation? How do businesses build their reputation? What is the reputation uh, of the place you go for? So you are going to include that information in your presentation for tomorrow, okay? What's reputation? Hey, but uh, we're gonna go directly to the to the conversation. There is a conversation between Daniel and Jessica, and I I will uh I will I need to I need you to pay special attention to the expressions that are in bold because over here we have. Uh, passive voice, okay? And I will explain what's going on with passive voice after reading this conversation. Daniel said, hey, so Jessica, what does your company do? And Jessica answered, at Rex, we produce clothes for kids. I see. And what is Rex known for? None. Is Rex known for? Rex is known for the modern designs and the quality of the clothes we make. Great. And are you happy to work for Rex? Absolutely. Rex is recognized, is recognized as a very prestigious company. Their personal is important for them. Congratulations, says Daniel. Congratulations, Jessica, you're right. Rex is rated as one of the 10 most, most prestigious companies in El Salvador. Now, question people. Where is this? What is it? What is it? Desconocido por. Ah, okay. So, so we the person Daniel is using the expression is rest known. No, okay. The verb is no. In the past is new. In the past participle is known. No. Okay. So we I, I will go over it step by step. And the same we have, for example, recognized. As you can see, uh, well, I don't remember if you, if, if you, um, well, the last, the last curse you were studying about regular and irregular verbs, right? So we have recognized over here, and we have known over here, known and recognized. Which, which one? Is the irregular and which one is the, the regular people? What is the irregular verb and what is the, the regular verb? None? Is it, is it regular? No, it's, ah. it's irregular. 
irregular. And what about recognized? Regular. Regular. Okay. Because of the E, D at the end. Okay. Now, uh, well, I will clarify just before getting into the grammar itself. I will clarify something here. Okay. Let's see. We have the verb or the verbs. Uh, we use this space. This space. No. The past is new. And the past participle, none. Now, we have recognize, that's the base form. Oh, sorry. Recognize the past form is recognized in the past. Participle form, you know what? Is recognized. Okay, so what's the, what's the difference? Okay, the difference is that in English, we have regular and irregular verbs, but you have two, yeah, you have to memorize, okay? Especially the irregular verbs. Los irregulares hay que memorizárselos, sí, sí. No, new, no, speak, spoke, spoken. Put, 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 cut, cut, cut. Y empiezan y ustedes ya fácilmente reconocen cuando un verbo es regular y cuando no es regular. En el segundo tenemos que es regular verb. Y miren, la regla aquí está mucho más sencilla. Porque si yo ya sé que este verbo es regular, quiere decir que en su pasado va a tener una ED. Y como ya sé que es regular, ya sé que el pasado participio también termina en ED. O sea, pasado y pasado participio se escriben y se pronuncian igual en su, en su mayoría de casos, ¿ok? ¿Ok? Reconocer, reconoció, reconocido. ¿Ok? Saber o, o conocer, conoció, conocido. ¿Ok? So that is the difference between these three forms. Uh, what am I telling you that? ¿Por qué les estoy explicando esto? Primero, porque más adelante les va a servir con otras estructuras gramaticales. Pero, de momento, uh, oh, sorry, de momento nos sirve para identificar el tema que, que nos compete ahora, que es passive voice. Passive voice. ¿Ok? So, whenever you get a question, whenever you have a question, just let me know it, okay? Let me know it. Well, oh, well, here, well, you have a, a, an activity that says if, it, if, if, it, if the statement is true or false. Now, number one, people know ranks produces clothes with modern design for kids. True or false? True or false? People know, people know. Rex produces clothes with modern design for kids. Tell me, true or false? True. Okay. True. Say true, true. <clears throat> people know Rex manufactures quality clothes for kids. True or false? True. True. People see Rex as a prestigious company. People see. True or false? True. 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 People rate. People rate. 
rates as one of the 20 most prestigious companies in El Salvador. True or false? False. 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 Okay, now, <clears throat> notice, what is the things, que, que tiempo, en que tiempo está la oración? People know. Rex produces. People know. Rex produces. Ajá. Uh -huh. Present. Simple present. What about number two? People know. Rex manufactures. Simple present. Simple present. People see. Rex. Rex as a prestigious company. Tense? Simple present. Simple present. People rate Rex as one of the 20 most prestigious companies in El Salvador. Tense? Tense? Simple present. Simple present. Now, look at what we have in here. Congratulations, Jessica. You are right. Rex is rated. Where, where do we have this sentence? ¿Cuál de estas oraciones significa lo mismo? Number four. Now, people rate Rex as one of the 20 most prestigious. Oh, yeah, that's right. That is the correct way. I was thinking about number three. No, but that's number four. Exactly, right? People rate. It's because uh, people rate. You're right. Rex is rated. Fíjense bien cómo va la estructura porque después van a hacer algunos ejercicios. Si está en presente simple, en voz activa, Active voice, porque aquí vamos a ver, la, el tema es passive voice. Pero yo les voy a explicar qué es active y qué es passive. Pero es para que ustedes se familiaricen, people rate es activo. Y si yo lo quiero en voz pasiva, miren cómo cambia. People rate, Rex as one of the 20 most, etc. But this is passive, esto es voz pasiva, lo que está aquí. Passive, and this is active, active, o activa. Ya lo vamos a ver en detalle. Solo quiero que se fijen cómo más o menos, eh, o que se familiaricen. People rate, Rex is rated. Okay, I hope that you could see something there. Okay, if you have any question, you can, you know, you can stop the class and say, teacher, I don't get it. Could you please help me once again? And explain the info. Well, sure. So I have this. This page. And I will share it with you. Because I know that you love. To see the information that I share over here. I will share it in the WhatsApp group. And also I will share it over here in the chat. Okay, this is, the, this is our first link. Well, it seems as if WhatsApp is not working to, tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's just sleepy also. Hey, what's up? What's going on with you, what's up? Hey, what's up, what's up? What's up? Well, well anyways, I wish it, I wish it later. Okay, but what really matters, well, you will see this link later. And as you can see, it says active and passive and the topic for us to study is passive voice but if we want to understand fully what's passive voice we need to understand what's active voice also okay and then you will see it says you see the level just for beginners right so that means that we're going to see a couple of exercises or examples that are very easy. For example, um, in the active voice, you know, active, we have the, uh, we, uh, uh, in the sentence, the, we can see the doer of the action. 
Yes or no? The hunter killed the lion. This is active. Eso es voz activa. Y fíjense bien, hay algunas claves para, para identificar. Tenemos el sujeto. Tenemos el verbo. Uh, the hunter killed. Okay, so this is, well, this is past. Si ustedes se fijan, esto es pas, tiempo pasado. Pero de alguna manera nos va a servir hasta que lleguemos al presente, donde de, es lo que más nos interesa esta noche. Um, the hunter killed the lion. This is active. Ok, podemos ver quién hizo la acción y podemos ver quién recibió la acción, ¿sí o no? The hunter, ¿qué hizo el hunter? Killed the lion. Al okay. pobre Leon, Lion, ¿verdad? Lion. Al pobrecito Lion se lo, se lo. The hunter es el que hizo la acción y el león es el que recibió el balazo. Okay. Kill the lion, the hunter, que de la. Now, look. The passive. Miren el pasivo. Ya no aparece el hunter. Apare Esto se van a dar cuenta después que depende de lo que nosotros queramos hacer. Ahorita no lo vamos a hacer como que no, no estaba aquí en la oración. The lion was killed. Ok, ¿quién, quién, quién fue el que mató al león en, en la voz pasiva? The hunter. ¿Cómo sabe? No, yeah. <laughs> ¿Cómo lo sabe que fue el Hunter? Si ya no está aquí, ya lo borramos. Aparece, si ustedes se fijan, en el Active, el protagonista de la escena es el que hace la acción, pero en pasivo es el que recibe la acción. Ok, y, y otra cosa que quiero que noten, que de un tiempo, ok, cuando tenemos un tiempo, la forma pasiva tiene una manera específica de formarse. En este caso está en pasado. Voy a buscar, voy a buscar el, eh, ejercicios con, o ejemplos con presente. Let me see. Okay, this one, for example. You see? Passive forms are made up of the verb be with the past participle. Okay? And you can see we have some sentences <coughs> over here that are in passive form. Okay? And the first one, the first sentence is English is spoken all okay. over the world. ¿En, ¿En qué forma está esta oración? ¿Está en voz activa o está en voz pasiva? Passive voice. Passive. ¿Cómo identifican que está en passive? Esto es clave. Verb be. Tenemos el verbo be. ¿Y qué más tenemos? Participo. Over here we have an adverb, right? So, si nosotros quisiéramos que esta oración ya no fuera voz pasiva, ¿qué tendríamos que hacer? ¿O cómo la escribiríamos en voz activa? Recuerden, esto es básico. Ya En eso ya no me voy a meter porque son otros tiempos. Lo vamos a dejar solo con, con el primero. Si yo ya, ya no quisiera que estuviera en voz pasiva, ¿cómo, ser, cómo lo, lo corregiría? Uh, 
spoke in English. Ajá, uh -huh, but who? ¿Se recuerdan las dos características que yo les dije? ¿Cuándo es, cuando es activo? ¿Cuándo es pasivo? Sí, acuérdense, este ejemplo es bien, bien, bien significativo. Veamos, quiero ver si lo hacemos en presente mejor. ¿Para que Para que para que lo veamos de mejor manera. ¿Qué me hace con que? Okay, the hunter killed the lion. Vamos a ponerlo en presente. Y lo vamos a poner plural. The hunters killed the lion. Ya no está en, en pasado, miren. The lions. Y le vamos a hacer plural acá, para que tenga más sentido. Ok, los cazadores matan leones. Okay, eso está en active. Y es una versión tan sencilla como las que hemos venido estudiando desde básico 1. Ok, por eso, me, por eso estoy basando esto. En, en, un, en un ejemplo sencillo. Ok, tengo tercera... Ok, the hunters, no. Tengo uh, tercera persona plural. Tengo el verbo conjugado. Y tengo the lions. Tengo uh, a los que hacen la acción. The lions, I mean, the hunters. The hunters. Tengo el verbo... I have the verb, and I have the liars, which are the ones who receive the, the action, right? Ellos hacen la acción, y el pobre león recibe la acción. Okay, active. Ahora vamos a hacer, we're going to work uh, in a passive form. Vamos a hacer ese mismo en presente, pero voz pasiva. ¿Cómo iría? The lions was, was killed. Okay. Si yo pongo was, es porque en, en la voz activa está en pasado. Ahora, pregunta. ¿Este verbo está en pasado? No. Oh, no. ¿En qué present. tiempo está? Presente. Present. Si está en presente, entonces aquí tengo que tener el verbo bien presente. The lion's kill. Now, what is the verb be, people? In present. ¿Se recuerdan? Um, is. Is. Are. Are. Okay, so if we have the verb in present, we have to, we need to have the verb to be in present. The lions. Uh -huh. yes. Where is the verb? Is? No, but it's plural. Are. 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 Are killed. Are killed. Okay. ¿Está bien el verbo kill ahí? ¿Está bien así? The lions are killed. Kill are. The lions are killed. ¿Qué le falta al verbo? Ed. Eh, E D, right? ¿Por qué, teacher? E D, aquí. Y si nosotros queremos especificar, si es importante, yo lo puedo dejar así, miren. The lions are killed. Okay, los leones son matados. Pero si yo quiero, si es importante para mí mencionar quién los mata, entonces yo, the lions are killed by the hunters. Por los cazadores. Ok. Sí, es importante. Yo considero que, que la gente puede, puede malinterpretar mi oración y pueden decir, ah, no, Daniel es el que los mata. O, 
Entonces, como que ya, como pierde el sentido de la oración, entonces no, yo digo quién o quiénes son. No es Daniel, no es Michael, no, no, no son ellos. Son los cazadores. ¿Ok? So, the lions are killed by the hunters. Ahora, fíjense bien. Fíjalo, Karen. Estoy tomando un poquito más de tiempo. Lo estoy explicando un poquito más a detalle. Porque después van a ver esto mismo con otros tiempos, ¿ok? Y si yo no arranco bien con esto, más adelante se van a encontrar en otros tiempos. Y van a decir, no, pero yo ni siquiera de la idea clara tengo esto de voz pasiva. Entonces, no, vamos a combatirlo desde ahorita. Ok, so, let's see. The hunters kill the lions. And the lions are killed by the hunters. Okay, so if you have the verb, ustedes ya tienen que saber que si es voz pasiva, este killed es el pasado participio. No puede ser el pasado sin. Okay, no puede ser pasado sin. Es pasado participio. Acuérdense, kill, si es regular, pasado, killed. Pasado participio, kill. Y dice, pues, ¿cómo sé si es pasado o pasado participio? La estructura se lo dice. O sea, si a mí me dice, teacher, ¿cómo va la estructura de la voz pasiva? Ah, bueno, necesito, si es activo, necesito the doer of the action, necesito el verbo y necesito eh, colocar quién recibe esa acción. Si es pasiva, entonces pongo al inicio quién es el que recibe la acción. Uso el verbo to be. Si el verbo está en presente, uso el verbo to be en presente. Y después de eso, coloco el verbo en pasado participio. Yo ya sé que es pasado participio. ¿Ok? A, a, a muchos les cuesta este tema. A otros les, se les hace muy sencillo. Oops, sorry, se lo borré. Ahí está. Ok. Pero para eso estamos, para irlo practicando. ¿Any question? No questions? Teacher. Hello. Um, vaya, entonces, the hunters es, a ver, es quien realiza la acción, ¿verdad? Exactly. Siempre, ajá, siempre va a ser en, en el activo. Y en el Ajá. pasivo, el, el sujeto o los primeros que van son los que reciben la acción. Exactly. Esa es una primera. Y la yeah. otra es que en el pasivo siempre va el are o, o el is, ¿verdad? O el am. Ah, de momento, o, sí. O no. De momento, sí. Porque es solo un tiempo. Pero si ustedes se fijan aquí... Ya está en pasado. Y si aquí se fija, ya es otra cosa. Y si aquí se fija, ah, yes, o yes, sea, yes. Va, va cambiando dependiendo el, el, el tiempo. Pues si es pasado, yes. ah, el verbo vi tiene que ir en pasado. Si es uh -huh. el presente perfecto, ah, tiene que continuar presente perfecto. Pero por eso no quiero adentrarme yo ahorita en eso, porque no, no me van a comprender qué es presente perfecto, qué es pasado perfecto. O sea, es meterse ya en intermedio, upper intermediate. Ok, uh -huh. para, que, para que lo toquemos. O sea, no, no lo puedo explicar ahorita porque Va. ustedes tienen que estar familiarizados con esos tiempos, ok. Uh -huh. okay. Y miren cuántos, cuántos tiempos, me Will be, was being, have been. Y hay más, will be. O sea, hay mucho, hay mucho que hacer ahí. Ok, now, any other question? No more questions? Well, I, I had this oh. extra info. Uh -huh, tell me. No, any question. No questions, okay. Now, look, tell me. Y este, la voz, no sé si en la activa o en la pasiva, siempre <laughs> tiene que ir en pasado participio. En uh, la okay. segunda. Okay, good question, Michael. Ok, uh, miren, me tomé, el, el, me tomé la decisión 
de buscar más de una página con la misma explicación, porque aparecen prácticamente otros ejemplos, eh, aclaran algunas otras cosas, etc. Entonces acá vamos a ver justamente lo que pregunta Michael. Esto, si ustedes se fijan, están en presente. La mayoría. Ya lo demás era solo para que ustedes tengan presente que esto no se queda aquí. O sea, hay mucho más, ¿verdad? Ok, en Michael se hey, teacher. Inactive. Inactive. ¿Cómo van, a, cómo van a ir en, en, en activo el verbo? In simple present. Simple present. No, base for no. Tiene no. Que, ¿Por qué digo simple present? Porque cuando yo llego a tercera persona, si aquí dijera the teacher, ya no los teacher, entonces aquí the teacher, the teacher helps. Ah, ya es tercera persona. Entonces, por lo mejor digamos present simple. Present the simple. teacher helps the new student. Ok, en el caso fuera tercera persona singular. Give me a second. Hey, what's going on there? Hey, Rodrigo, ¿qué es el soccer match? Ok. <laughs> To the favorite. Okay, por, por ahí se escucha que, que hay un, un um, sonido ambiente que nos está interferiendo en la clase. Por favor, chequen para que estemos totalmente concentrados en, en esto. Porque si no, pues ya luego nos va a costar más. O sea, Ok, the teachers help. Present simple. Ok, I'm trying to answer uh, Michael's question. Estoy tratando de contestar la pregunta de Michael. In, this is active, right, Michael? And in passive, as you can see, we need to have the verb to be in present and we have to get a verb in the past Parsiple form. Pas parsiple. Okay. Look at the look at the at the next example. The teachers help help the new students. Aha, uh -huh. the new students. Now here is the opposite because because we have. Students, okay, in plural form. And the teachers are the one who help. Los teachers son los que ayudan. Okay. And the, student, the students are help. Y los estudiantes son ayudados, okay? Son ayudados by the teacher. By the teacher. The teacher help, yeah. active that the new students are helped. Okay, Michael? Yes, teacher. Entonces, todo, en todos los pasivos siempre se usa el to be. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Michael. Yeah. Sin excepción. No, yeah, that's right. You you need to use a... Uh, uh, okay. Well, you know, be... In present is, well, how is this? Yeah, am is are. Am is are. Okay, mm -hmm. that's where be in present, be. Okay, in presente. Pero ya en otras estructuras van a ocupar was, were. Y en otras estructuras van a ocupar been. Okay, so, si ustedes se fijan, inglés se pone más, más lindo todavía porque... <laughs> Eh, nos vamos a empezar a sentir un poquito así, oh my goodness, eh, me duele vamos la cabeza. Vamos a empezar más tiempo. Me duele la cabeza, o oh, ay, esta voz pasiva, o oh, cualquier otra expresión por ahí, 
pero son necesarias al momento de hablar, al momento de comunicarse, son sumamente necesarias. Por eso, miren, en, en un par de páginas yo me, me he tomado el tiempo que considero necesario para tratar de introducirlos a esto. Ok, so we have, look at this, third person singular. Ben walks the dog. They make cookies here. Present simple, present simple. The dog is, the verb to be. Okay. ¿Qué forma de verbo es este, Michael? Pasado participio. Pasado, Pasado participio. Regular. Y participio. Ok. Are made. What about made? Past mm. participle. And look at the, the negative statements. Ok. Vean las negativas. Ben doesn't walk the cat. Miren. En lugar de usar el auxiliar dasen porque esto acuérdense esto es activo cuando vamos a pasivo isen what isen está el verbo to be pero está en negativo mm -hmm. they don't make sandwiches here sandwiches aren't made here okay so That is like the sequence, right? To follow. Does Ben walk? Question. Look, look at the question. Does Ben, we have third person singular. Okay. And, and, and we have the auxiliary does with a question mark. So, but that is active and we need to have passive. Is the rabbit walked by Ben? How do they make the cookies? How do they make? Uh, how are the cookies made? Okay. Aquí es donde empieza quizá un poquito el... Oh, eh, the trouble, the trouble, el problema. <laughs> Entonces, ¿saben qué? Mejor este, veamos. Si no, ya aquí ya se va a otros tiempos, miren. No, 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 vamos a dejarlo en presente, ¿ok? Dejémoslo en presente. Ok, y veamos qué otros ejercicios podemos encontrar acá. Let me see. Ah, aparte de eso, tengo una presentación que, me, que, que, que sentí está súper para antes de empezar a trabajar en algo con Passive Voice. Okay, now is the time when you can you can ask whatever you uh, you want related to passive voice. Well, I will try to finish, okay? Because the information we have a, a wide information to talk about passive voice. Now, can you see the info? Yes. No. Yes, teacher. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What is what is the 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 topic, people? What is the topic? Active and, and passive active. Active and passive voice. voice. What is the topic, right? Present tense. Active voice. Active means alert. An active voice subject is the doer. ¿Se fijan lo que les estaba diciendo? Inactive voice subject is the doer of an action. Example. He plays games. ¿Quién hace la acción? He. He. Aquí está el, the doer of the action. ¿En qué tiempo está? Simple present, right? What does he play? Ah, he plays games. He plays games. Okay. Now, what about passive? Passive means lazy somehow. In passive voice, subject is the receiver. 
of an action. Games are played by him. Si usted quiere, by him. Okay. Games are played by him. Now, steps for, for changing active into passive. Okay. First step, change object <coughs> into subject. Object into subject. We're going to see what that, what, what it refers to. Helping verbs. Okay. In this case, we have the verb to be in the, in the, in the first, I mean, in the present form. Third person form of a verb. Add by in case you need it. Change the subject into object. Y aquí empieza otra cosa que hay que tomar en cuenta. Miren. Si por ejemplo. Oops, si por ejemplo. Bueno. Les voy a compartir esa presentación. En caso no logremos uh, trabajar a detalle todo. Uh, I. When you have it in the active, in the passive changes to me. We changes to us. You remains, but one is object a pronoun and the other one is subject pronoun. He, him, she, her. It remains. And they, them. Hey, this I think this would be really nice uh, to to get another homework, right? Ya llevan una, ya tienen una tarea, okay? Ya tengo una tarea muy específica, pero viendo esto, pues considero es necesario que también estudien object pronouns. Eso se llaman object pronouns, okay? Yes. Object pronouns. Object Profe. Pronoun. Tell me, Michael. Eh, no, es que eso es solo yo, pero no, no puedo ver lo que está explicando. Oops, my goodness. No se ve nada, teacher. Sí, no se ve. Y me a second. <laughs> Pensé que me estaba quedando ciego. What about what about now? Pensé que era el sueño. Pero, pero, no, pero sí había alguien, algunos sí podían visualizarlo porque estaban leyendo. Okay. Ah, bueno. Solo los sí. que tenemos teléfonos, quizás que no. Pero ahora sí, Michael. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. teacher. Yes. Okay, so esa es la tarea. No, no, okay. no, no se han perdido mucho, la okay. verdad. Porque esa es la tarea. So, se llaman object pronouns. Ok. ¿Por qué los estoy mandando a investigar object pronouns? Bueno, porque nos van a servir en passive voice. Y no solo en este tiempo, sino en todos los tiempos. Object pronouns. Ok. okay. Now, helping verb will be used as follow. Is, am, um, are. He, she, it, singular now, boy, car, child, etc. Are with we, you, and they, plural now, boys, cars, etc. And am with I. I am, right? Now the positive sentences. He plays cricket. Yes, sí. Me gustó esta presentación por esto, justamente. He plays cricket. Okay. okay. Él juega cricket. El que hace la acción. Okay. Cricket is. Play it. Play it. ¿Cuál de esos tres es? ¿El primero, el segundo o el tercero? Number three. Al tercero. Ya sabemos que es past participle, right? Se escribe igual, se pronuncia igual, pero ya tiene que ser este. No puede ser este. Ok. Ok. <laughs> By him. Ok. I'm trying to... Estoy tratando que se acostumbren a, a eso, porque... Porque les va a servir. Subject pronoun, teach, verb, 
en el object pronoun. Ya ven que si se ocupa object pronouns, mm. I teach him. I teach him. Yo le enseño a él. Passive. He, he is. ¿Cuál es el pasado participio de teach? Teaching. No. That's present participle. Teacher. No. Es Talk. un irregular touch. Es no. Talk. irregular touch. <laughs> I mean, se escribe igual, se produce igual, tough. pero tiene que ser este, no puede ser otro. Tough, tough, tough. Taught by, by me. me. Ok. Miren, el tiempo se hace muy corto con este tipo de temas. The boy reads a book. The boy reads a book. The person. Subject, the boy. The parent the person. We have indefinite article and we have a book. That is the noun. That's the object, right? A book. The boys reads what? The, a book. A book, a look book. at the passive. Aquí va la pasiva. A book is. Is, is. is what? Read. Read. Read by. Ahora fíjense bien en este verbo, porque este verbo sí cambia la pronunciación. Read. Ah, no, I mean, it remains, right? Red. And red, como que fuera el color rojo. Red. Read, red, red. Read, red, red. red. Ok. Ok, now, any questions so far? Vamos a, tratar, vamos, vamos a hacer algunos ejercicios, ok. Uh, veamos si podemos hacer alguno en negativo. Ustedes lo van a ir haciendo. We do not catch the fish. Teacher. Passive. Tell me. Eh, los verbos que terminan en CHT, ¿cómo se pronuncian? For example, this one, catch. Catch. Yeah, catch. Como We... H, como H, la yeah. CHT. Yeah, catch. Catch. Okay. Okay, the fish. We do not catch the fish. It's in present, right? Yeah. Ahora, ¿cómo lo, lo harían en voz pasiva? But, mire, le voy a dar unas claves así. Lo siento, the pero fish. ese día sí me tocó moverme bastante, más o menos en español. No me hubiese gustado, pero tuve que. Cut is irregular. Es irregular. Tienen que identificar el tipo de verbo que les presenta o la oración. ¿Ok? Tienen que identificar el tiempo. ¿Ok? Y tienen que identificar el, 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 el doer of the action. Esto ya sabemos que es active. Sabemos que es activo. Ahora, pasivo, ¿cómo iría? ¿Quién me ayuda? The fish. The fish. Ok. The fish That's is not. isn't. Um, the right. fish, the fish right. isn't. Right. Is not. Are not. Mm. Well, this is tricky, right? Because fish can be singular and plural. Ok. Pero en este caso es plural. Ya lo vi por, por el, con, como, cómo va a resultar el, el ejercicio. Eh, the fish is or are? Uh, plural are. Uh, are. are. But, uh, and, and, and actually, I mean, it may be singular or plural, but what really matters is this part, right? The fish are... Mm -hmm. Are not. Are, are um, not. Very good. Catched. Catched. ¿Cómo termina Caught. este verbo en ED? Catched. ¿En ED termina? 
Um, ¿Seguros? no, no estoy segura. Ah, ok. Entonces aquí viene mi otra recomendación. Aquí viene, la, aquí surge la necesidad de aprenderse los verbos. Sí o sí, hay que aprendérselos. Porque si no, yo se los digo por, porque he visto en, en otros cursos que hay personas que se descuidan de los verbos y cuando se enfrentan a otras estructuras están con un, con un terrible dolor de cabeza porque no estudiaron los verbos en su momento. Entonces, todo el tiempo les da problema que no saben qué, cuál es el pasado de, del participio de catch o de otro verbo. Entonces, ahorita que estamos en básico, es muy, muy buen tiempo para familiarizarse o aprenderse mucho verbo. Catch, caught, caught. By, by us. Ok, miren, en activo, qui, en pasivo, cambia a object pronoun. Este, este es este. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, any question? Any question? No questions. Va, y, y fíjense, hey. esto, va, esto, esto va para el día viernes, la, 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 lo que ustedes van a preparar. <risa> Acuérdense, por eso me he estado entreteniendo mucho en esto. Hey, let's see, porque ya no, ya no queda mucho, muy poco tiempo. ¿Saben qué? Se lo voy a compartir para que ustedes lo miren a detalle, lo estudien. Quiero, vamos a ver qué nos presenta el libro, ¿ok? Porque... Let's see what's coming in a book. Ooh, I lost it. Hey, where are you? That's over here. Uh, another piece of advice, people. Another piece of advice. Otro, otro consejo es que no se desesperen si, si lo encuentran un poquito complicado, porque si ustedes lo practican tarde o temprano, va, va a tener resultados, ¿ok? So, you, you see, we started with the conversation, right? We started with it. So we we saw that Jessica started by saying, so oh, Jessica, okay. uh, Daniel, right? So Jessica, what does your company do? At Rex, we produce clothes. Ahora fíjense bien. En, en esa oración, ¿está en activo o en pasivo? Activa. Ok, regálenme la voz pasiva de esa oración, por favor. The clothes are um, are produced. Excellent. The clothes uh, are by, produced by us. By us. Okay. Excellent. That's the way it is, right? Now, well, this is a question, I mean, what, what form is this one, active or passive? Active or passive? Passive. Passive, como lo, como lo, como transforman esa oracioncita en, en, en active? Mm -hmm. 
Difficult. Cambiando Recuerdan que yo les dije. El, no. ¿Ah? Cambiando el, 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 el modo del verbo sería no. Ah, ok. Pero ¿qué más faltaría? Recuérdense que en un, en un active necesitamos a, a identificar quién es el que hace la acción. People know rigs for the modern designs. People know, okay? Because rigs is known. And then you have some others over here, right? So we already work in this one. People know Rex produces clothes for more design for kids. People know, people see, people rate, etc. So for tomorrow, para mañana también, quiero que me muestren estas oraciones en pasivo, en voz pasiva. Solo son cuatro. Okay? Enough job, right? Now, any question about it? Any questions so far? No questions. No questions. Well, okay, maybe. so uh, any comment? How how was it today? <laughs> how was it? ¿Cómo estuvo voz pasiva? Difficult. <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> Difficult. ¿Saben qué? Después... Al inicio uno siente que hoy oh, no, voz pasiva. Me enfermé, ticho. Eh, y empieza a doler la cabeza. Entonces yo siempre escucho que mis la, algunos, porque no son todos, hay, hay, hay personas que lo, que lo, o sea, su, su manera de, 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 aprender, de aprender como que como que capta un poquito más rápido. Pero hay otros que, que, que se quejan de teacher, me da la cabeza, ojo. Y empieza más, y ahorita solo vimos un tiempo, fíjense. Y este, ya si nos empezamos a mover a otros tiempos, eso no es que se complique, sino que en realidad este, es de saber cómo se mueven los tiempos, de un tiempo a otro tiempo. Pero, pero, no, pero... Cuando se, llegue, cuando se lleguen a estos, a estos temas, yo siempre les digo a los participantes o a los estudiantes, es ahora cuando más ustedes deben mostrar eh, sus deseos de aprender. No es cuando las cosas están fáciles, porque Tan cuando viva. las cosas están fáciles, wow, uno siente que wow, inglés, ya sí, me lo he hecho a la bolsa, pero cuando <risa> se vienen cositas como estas, como que algunos... Ya no quieren, quieren como, <risa> como tirar la toalla y es cuando la vida les está diciendo no tires la toalla, solo es momentáneo. Después de esto es como que el idioma va engranando. Vieran qué lindo se siente cuando ya uno empieza a, a expandirse en el idioma y dice, ah, wow, esto engrana con lo que vimos en básico. Y esto engrana con lo esto de voz pasiva. Y esto, ah, no, esto está... Y la mente empieza a, a trabajar de una, man, una manera súper genial. Que yo les recomiendo que no se lo pierdan. Porque de repente, pues, sus sueños ya no van a ser en español, van a ser en inglés. Aunque no lo crean. Si alguien no ha soñado en inglés, pues, crean lo que ya pronto ya ustedes van a andar hablando en inglés en sus sueños. Sí, Ajá, y, sí, sí, y, de, sí, y se van a dar cuenta que al inicio, inclusive en los sueños, cometemos errores de gramática. Yo, pues, digo, uy, yo dije esto en el sueño. Y ya después, <risa> hasta en los sueños, mejor a uno, en realidad. <risa> Así que es un proceso, no, no, este, apenas, yo no sé si habían visto algo un poco, algo un poquito más difícil aparte de esto. No. No. no, esta es como el primer bocadito vez, un poquito durito que estamos poniendo nosotros <risa> acá, ¿verdad? Pero no se preocupen, ¿ok? Ahorita podemos quizás pensar que el bocadito está un poco duro, pero en realidad no es así. Ya van La a ver que... Va. Nos ha dado, teacher. ¿Perdón? La Dale. comida seco nos ha dado, le dije. Sí. No, si lo llevé, wow, traté de llevarlos muy, muy, muy despacito. 
Ok, traté de... Porque ya sabía que algunos nos iban a decir algo. Pero, este... Traté de llevarlos lo más, lo más este, despacito posible. Y no, no se preocupen, ok, pero Alice, porque apenas introduje el tema. Imagínense, mañana vamos a hacer repaso de infinitivos y ING. Ok, todos preparados con una actividad, todos, por favor. Y el viernes, todos preparados con infinitivo, ING y voz pasiva. O sea, yo necesito ver eh, que ustedes me ejemplifiquen en un, en un ejercicio o en una, en una pequeña historia, un, algo que han escrito, cómo lo han aplicado. ¿Ok? Y ya eso es trabajo personal. Pensaba hacerlo en grupo, pero uh, yo sé que los, que los tiempos no coinciden muchas veces, ¿ok? Pero sí, esas son las tareas como más, como más eh, significativas para la semana. La otra semana, recuérdense que entran a un periodo de vacación. ¿Te echan la tarea para mañana? Eh, la primera, yo les puse... Uh, que nos comentaran, que nos describieran qué es lo que se hace en, en su compañía, en el lugar donde ustedes eh, trabajan, ¿verdad? Ah, okay. Qué es lo que hace usted, qué es lo que hace su compañero. Pero en esa descripción tienen que adecuar infinitivos y tienen que adecuar ING después de, 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 la, de alguna preposición, o sea, lo que hemos estudiado pero ya aplicado a la realidad. Eh, ¿Otra, Ticha? ¿O solo esa? Y para el día viernes, la voz pasiva. O sea, sumado a eso que van a trabajar para mañana, ya vayan mentalizándose que para el día viernes hay que aportar algo al, 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 a la clase mostrando eh, algo que ustedes consideren significativo para compartirlo con los demás. O sea, yo aprendí de esta manera, compañeros. Yo encontré esta lectura y visualicé que aquí está la voz pasiva, que esto es pasado participio. Miren, la lectura tiene como 12 verbos en pasado participio y ya me los memoricé. Ya sé la pronunciación, ya sé que esto es pasivo. O sea, que nos demuestren en algo que ustedes manejen muy bien el día viernes, que sí han aprendido en esta semana. Ese es el objetivo. Por supuesto, yo voy a tener algunas actividades por ahí para que practiquemos, pero quienes van a ser los, más los protagonistas de estas dos secciones, sesiones, perdón, van a ser ustedes. Porque interesa más que ustedes hagan a que el teacher haga. El teacher, pues yo ya, ya sé un poquito de esto de voz pasiva, pero, ajá, ajá, pero yo lo que necesito es ver cómo ustedes se van desenvolviendo y cuando, okay. cuando vaya viendo cómo se desenvuelve ahí yo puedo observar y puedo decir ah, aquí falla esto, aquí falla esto, otro o aquí lo hicieron muy bien ah, voy a hacer un repaso en eso y, y prácticamente pues estos días que son de repaso eh, yo visualizo cómo han avanzado y en qué necesitamos como puntualizar más. ¿De acuerdo? So, okay. Si no hay otra pregunta, pues solo déjenme pasar lista, así rapidito y cerramos, ¿ok? Thank you, teacher. Ok. Don't even mention it. It's my pleasure. Uh, Aidan. Belén, Daniel, present teacher, Ed, Edgar, present teacher, Gladys, present teacher, Jonathan, present teacher, José Daniel, present teacher, Juan Fernando, present, Mario Cristóbal, present, Marta Berenice, Yeah, I'm here. Merlin. 
I, I know Merlin is here. Michael? Present teacher. teacher. Okay. Noe? I am here, teacher. Good. Norma? Ronan? Teresa? Vera Liz? Present, present. All right. And Chancy? Present teacher. Okay, thank you. Now, well, let us rest a little bit. Vamos a descansar un poco de esto de la voz pasiva, okay? Mm, piensen, pero, pero cómo hacer más que todo para el día bien, ok, dejen, dejen la reposar un poquito, voz pasiva para el día de mañana y ya, ya luego hablamos de voz pasiva otra vez el día bien, ok profe, y pasó lo, los links de la voz pasiva sí. que estaba, uh, solo me faltó uno, la presentación Michael en, en en Whatsapp, ya se la voy a compartir, ok, ya los, los enlaces okay. y ahí están Okay, okay, see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Good see you later. Night. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. tomorrow. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.